Good morning, AI fans, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here just getting started with our three days of coverage at KubeCon at North America. My name's Savannah Peterson, with my KubeCon wingman forever, Rob Streche. <laughs> Rob, this one's going to be fun. This is going to be fun. I, I think the entire community is fun, but I, I think, again, being a data geek, uh, you know, I love being able to dig into the applicability and how it plays in the community. I yeah. know, this is really kind of in our nerd sweet spot, you and this I. Is very it's, much, it's very much in our sweet spot. <laughs> Speaking of sweet nerds, AB, thank you so much for being here with us on the show. We're very delighted to have you. And Sanjeev, always a pleasure to have you coming Likewise. and hanging out with us. Although I have to say I'm hurt you said AI fans. What about data fans and Kubernetes fans? Yes. They're, 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 <laughs> they're all, all a part of yeah. that. They're all they're watching. All yeah. They're all out there and, watching. And, and in fact, I think, well, the, all of those things chime in or play a role in AI as well. So yeah. yes. they, they all get a shout out throughout yeah, the course of the 32 it's years. Trust me, Sanjeev, yes. I just try and keep them on their toes over there on the other side of the camera. <laughs> so it's, it's, <laughs> it's good. IB, I bumped into Jonathan earlier today. You know we're big Minio fans over here. I've actually modeled your shirts. We have you on the show every KubeCon. Bumped into Jonathan today, and he was very excited telling me all about your announcement from yesterday. AI store, give us the breakdown. It sounds super cool. It, it is actually a huge milestone for yeah. Minio because uh, all of the deployments, if you see the past, Minio is deployed all kinds of use cases from really small to very large clusters. And uh, the deployments are just so, like the number of deployments. We are the dominant player in this market by adoption, the largest player by numbers, but then, uh, when it came to business, you uh, you don't want to boil the ocean. Uh, you are better off winning one use case at a time. And uh, as the as the product matured into the commercial market, we started seeing where is the most powerful business use case. It started out as data infrastructure running analytics and database and machine learning, and that evolved into Gen AI. Post Gen AI, every one of our customer is now restructuring their organization to put AI at the heart of their business, and that leads to data, right? And now that data, if you can put it in public cloud, or you can put it in private cloud, private cloud, we pretty much, we are the choice, and here we learned a great deal watching our other large scale customers, the kind of stuff that we did at hyperscale level, like these are exabyte scale deployments, we took those improvements. Which is huge for the record. Yeah, yeah. and then created a commercial version of Minio optimized for AI workloads, and that's AI Store. Yeah, and, and I think, again, we were Congrats. talking before this, and there was a lot of statistics about the amount of downloads, Correct. and you yeah. were talking about. Yeah, so Rob is so interesting. I uh, decided to write uh, one of my blogs on Minio, which I will publish tomorrow on my Medium site. And so I started doing my own research, and uh, I thought Minio had half a billion uh, Docker pulls. It turns out it's two billion now. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then I find out that there's six million deployments and actually, according to Minio, there are more S3 deployments from Minio than AWS itself. Which I find mind boggling yeah. because oh. AWS yeah, it owns it. it yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I think that just talks to the power That's of impressive. open source. Yeah. That is really impressive. Yeah. It's the same way Kubernetes grew into the enterprise, right? Like they, they kind of yeah. come through the back door and uh, as a shadow IT developers, they, they, didn't, they didn't listen to the analysts and CIO what technology we should bring. That's how it used to be, right? But when these, these developers brought in new technologies, that became the foundation for modern infrastructure. The same way Kubernetes grew, Kafka grew, Elastic grew, Minio came through the shadow ID, and now every one, every one of these organizations are surprised to see at the scale we are operating. Data is the heart of their business, and where is it sitting? Most often it's on our technology. They are discovering that, and they are coming to us to build a long-term partnership. One of the things I'm always really impressed with your company, and I haven't had the chance to tell you this specifically, is you're, you're kind of this humble, but wildly adopted everywhere. Yeah. Every time I talk to Jonathan, we're yeah, talking yeah. about different users of your product and, and different use cases, and I'm thinking to myself, that is so impressive and yeah. embedded. Mm. You recruit from your customers as well. I know we have Daniel on the show tomorrow, which, which is awesome. Since, since this is your baby and we are seeing a different level of adoption right now, what are some of the use cases that get you most excited or some of your customers that have you personally most excited? Yeah, even for, uh, on the first part, right, like we are kind of like, we are everywhere, but like they, you, you didn't know about us or some, some people, if you see the business side, right, yeah. the CEOs might not have heard about us, but if you actually talk to the infrastructure people, we are everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. It was an intentional uh, persona we created 
learning from the consumer market. The consumer market first create a beautiful product, the average product still dies, right? Bad product dies quickly. You build a product that people fall in love with and then earn their trust and then it grows and grows and then you build the business relationship. Now, these, these customers come to us and they want a 4 year long-term relationship, that's starting to work. And this is where the use cases wise, right? Yeah, I was like, we are running in all the most popular cruise ships you go, we are running there. 5G towers, even the same users who would run us at hundreds of petabytes to exascale on their daytime job, they go home and they would run Minivo on their Synology and QNAP home NAS systems. Right? Because Minivo has an ARM port, we saw all kinds of like, like absolutely fun and crazy deployments. I would never imagine someone would you can use it like that. Yeah. These are some retail, large retail stores, I can't name them. They put Minivo inside the camera and the lots of cameras. All, and, and these are like 2,000 cameras per store. They're trying wow. to digitize right. and automate everything. I would never I never intended that kind of use case. Originally, I built Minivo for very large deployments, not for these small deployments. Not for the edge deployments not for and the things deployments. of that nature. But, but you're seeing it, I, I think, when we were talking earlier, and I, I know Sanjeev is seeing similar things, is that a lot of people are bringing the AI to the data. Yep. Yeah. The data has weight, it has gravity, yeah. it's on premise, it's in these edge locations. Talk to that a, a little bit about what you've been seeing in your customer base mm -hmm. as people grow that data and need these kind of commercial related uh, I guess you could say advancements that you've been yeah. learning from that open yeah. source community. First, I think the bringing AI to the data now it has become very clear. If you have, if you if you brought thousand GPUs, ten thousand GPUs, if you don't have data, those GPUs are going to sit idle, right? That's where and they're, they're expensive. Expensive. Yes. <laughs> and every every hour yeah. counts. Yes. Right? Yeah. And this is where they realize that. Unless you put data at the heart of your business, bring all of your data from different teams and centralize and build an AI data repository, you're not going to have an AI practice. Data, it's AI starts with the data, so once they, they do that, then the AI, AI wheel starts spinning. Interestingly for us, right, when we saw that, we got pulled into the AI market because the data was sitting on our platform. Public cloud, object store is the foundation. Private cloud, you wouldn't go to SAN or NAS, so we were at the heart of it. But it, this led to, if AI is the key commercial use case we need to win, we can do more for the AI, AI use case. If they took us to AI, why can't we take AI to Minio product? And that's what resulted in AI store. We actually brought in cool AI capabilities inside the product itself. That way, if your data is sitting in our system, you don't need to download the data. You can directly prompt the data and talk to the data. That opened up a whole new possible set of possibilities for our users. That allows people to realize value so much faster. It's exactly. It's such a lower barrier to exactly. entry, too. And it makes so much sense. Why would you do all of those things if you don't need to, if, if yeah. you really need to communicate. You mentioned communication there, you mentioned the word cool. Before we were live, you said something very cool mm. to us about your product development yeah. and how yeah. you looked to to Instagram and TikTok as, as inspo in your product roadmap. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that, that was very striking. So, so uh, most people don't know all the kind of stuff that's happening inside the company. Uh, what comes out is actually a very small part of all the development that goes on. Very much like you, you, write, a, you write a novel, it, 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 only one version of it. You release, everything else is destroyed, right? You actually write code and throw it away. Mm -hmm. And it, it keeps us sane uh, doing I'm this. I'm writing a book right now, so yeah. you're like, you're, you, I feel seen and attacked and also very empathetic You know right exactly yeah, what yeah, I, I mean, right? exactly what you and mean. All those variations are necess yeah. necessity, yeah, yeah. right? It's not a waste, right? It leads you to the right <laughs> answer. And uh, the AI work that we have been doing, right? We were drowning in our own data. And the more data you capture, more data you make it accessible, suddenly it's not accessible, meaning too much information is also useless, right? This yeah. is where we saw, always we look up to the consumer world. They solve problems at that massive scale. When you have too much data, how can you make it consumable? Take the most exciting part of the data and surface it, it goes viral. And how do you do that? When you have unstructured data, in the past, you could do that in a database, but if you're talking about unstructured data, you cannot do this. This is exactly where Gen AI comes to help. So we actually turned all kinds of information, initially to a rag model, then to a q and a, FA, automatic FAQ, nobody consumed that information. Turn that into a viral podcast, automatically, like even celebrities talking about all the things that's happening in the company over the last one month, everybody is involved. Then these kind of exciting innovation that we were doing, customers were excited too. So they wanted that, so we took that and 
brought it inside the product in a consumable way so everybody can take advantage of it. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. That's really impressive. And I, I think what's interesting is, again, as AI evolves, right, yeah. there's, you're bringing out things like you have your AI hub, mm. you have, I think, new protocol support, and like RDMA, I, I mean, again, I know there's InfiniBand out yeah. there, but mm. I, I, Ethernet's going to win. I mean, I, let's, yeah. most organizations. Do you look at all of these enhancements as, and how are you, like, again, bringing that into your roadmap? Is it, mm. hey, customers are saying to us, we have these HPC clusters, we're doing RDMA, we need to go to higher speeds, Let's. we need this protocol support. Is yeah. that really yeah. how you're pulling that in? No, actually not, it's quite opposite. Again, learning from the consumer world, right? Consumer playbook is actually the playbook we follow for enterprise, because when you're, a customer paying $10, $100, they expect a world of everything. In the enterprise world, when you pay a million dollar, what kind of service you deserve, you need to, you, you should expect a, a white glove service and a red carpet, right? And this is where, that if you turn to more and more complex and larger systems, it's not worth it. Enterprise should not be complex and, uh, and shiny and heavy. It should be simpler. Only simple systems scale. So the, the filter we always apply is, if you can take the, the bleeding edge, right? it could be RDMA, it could be a, a rack model, doesn't matter. If I cannot simplify it and I cannot operate it at scale, it's not going to scale in every way. So that is the, that is the filter, like a, a, even, even RDMA, RDMA, like we have used it extensively since my previous and previous startup, I came from the supercomputing space. Uh, and a, 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 but if you see RDMA never got the enterprise adoption. These are Java developers and they don't, they don't know how to do RDMA, right? But this is where you kind of take this and hide it inside the protocol. You still look, it lo still looks like S3 API for you, but underneath when you transfer data, it switches to the RDMA channel. And Make it consumable, make it easy that you don't need to understand what's under the hood. If you want to, the code is there, go read it, right? But it's about simplifying everything is the only way to make it work. How do you see this playing out? Because again, you, you're an analyst, you see this perspective yeah. and you see a lot of different things. So simplification is something that every client uh, I talk to wants. And this is not just you know, in object storage, it's true even for like what's happening with iceberg, delta, and all that. It's, so such simplification is uh, reduction of complexity means reduction of cost. In a world where skills are so hard to get, you know, it's inevitable that we need to uh, move into simplification. Now what I find interesting, and I want to get your thoughts on this, is I feel AI has a hunger problem. It needs data, and if it doesn't, and that to contextual data, yeah. which is like your own PDFs, your own videos, your audio images, that are inside the organization's security firewall. So, so what I, I really like, what I'm starting to see is, from simplicity point of view, you have something called prompt object where I can now ask questions directly without having to do rag pipeline. Yeah. The other thing that I like, uh, that what you announced uh, today, is that by using RDMA and you just get rid of all this memory to memory copying on uh, Ethernet that, that runs on 200 or 400 gigabit per second Ethernet, you are really saturating the pipe. So you're making that data a, yeah. accessible through prompt object, B, available mm. to the models, yeah. right? Yes. So you're solving both the top yes. uh, front end yes. and the back end. Yeah. Is that how? It, it is. Uh, it, the, we look at it in two parts, right? One, the, uh, the data problem, if you yeah. look at the compute side, it has gone complete belly up, right? Like the, the, the old infrastructure was CPU and it, they went scale out and it's a very different, very different architecture. But in the, the new modern Gen AI world, CPUs are like uh, uh, co-processors. Yes, GPUs correct. are GPUs the are heart the, of the yes, modern processing. Correct. And GPUs, yeah. like the supercomputing I built in 2004, was yeah. the fastest in the US. Today, a single GPU can run circles around wow. it. And that wow. kind of density when you a single node has eight GPUs, and then you have you have now thousands and thousands of GPUs, 
the, the whole compute infrastructure has changed. Mm -hmm. And that put enormous tax on the data infrastructure. You mm -hmm. cannot build modern AI data infrastructure on traditional SAN and NAS type infrastructure. Yeah. Right? This is where the, the networking, everything is changing. The, in the last 12 to 18 months, we are, we, are start, we are seeing a massive shift in the infrastructure architecture. Yeah. And the, uh, so we, uh, we, uh, these are, that's why the AI store was so critical for us that it needs to adapt to the modern infrastructure. Right. But at the end of the day, if you are an average web developer writing in Node.js and uh, PHP, if, if you have to learn all this, you, the, the AI is yeah. not going to work. Correct. So that is where I'm going to hide all the complexity underneath. But it's important for me yeah. that your compute side is go, it has to be kept, GPU has to be kept busy. If data is the bottleneck, yep. GPUs cannot be busy. So RDMA, stuff like that are so critical. Network is the bottleneck because data and compute are disaggregated and they need to be connected with a high bandwidth yeah. network. And that is hidden underneath a API that looks it, 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 it looks so trivial from the application side, Correct. but all that magic, they don't even know. You know how to do get object and put object, you can do prompt object without knowing anything how it works. That is consumerization of wow. AI. Yeah. No, I, I think that totally makes sense. I, I think again, it's, it's one of these things that you got to look at it. I, I'll ask your question. How about this? I, I love your question. Okay, you can have it today. Can I go there? Yeah, you, you can <laughs> so, go there. I do have what, another question for him now okay. before we wrap this, well, but you can well go then, ahead. Okay, well, yeah, well, I'll let you go there. <laughs> well, so I think it's interesting. You 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 started MinIO 10 years ago. Yeah. Same 10-year anniversary yeah. as Kubernetes right yep. now. Mm. Community, obviously, an exciting spot. We're in a whole new world. I just want to know as a founder, as, as a creator, as a builder, did you think you would be in this spot a decade ago when you embarked on this journey? So, I picked this problem not because of a very simple reason that I want to pick a long-term problem. I don't want to pick some short-term problem, build a startup, get acquired, go home. I didn't do this for making money. You do this because you want to change the way fundamentally infrastructure works. And I saw, I picked this problem of data because I knew 10 years from now, I asked the same question, it's going to be more true than ever. So today, if you see, because post GNA world, data is everything. I said this 10 years before. Mm -hmm. is more true now, but we always pick problems that are worth solving, but it's so easy to articulate that why it is important, and then every day you make improvement incrementally, and it's going to give you enormous advantage because you focused on just one problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are here because we saw a long-term, uh, pick an important big problem that every day you wake up to go solve it. So, so Beautifully said. I was going to say, that, that so actually leads there. Yeah. right into her question that I'll, I'll, I'll ask it's this time. question, this interview, well, Rob, today, I love it, let's yes. go. <laughs> what do you hope that when we have you on, either in London in six months, or in Atlanta in a year, that you can say about AI, AI store, mm -hmm. and how MinIO is moving forward here again? Yeah, I think the, the path for us is clear. Literally, this launch is the second phase of the company. The first phase was about land grab and adoption. We need to be everywhere. We needed to create the market because outside of the public cloud, the world looks so old school and incompatible with the cloud. So Kubernetes leveled the ground on the compute side and object store, MinIO leveled the ground on the storage side. The SAN and NAS and traditional VMs are kind of irrelevant in the modern world. That is achieved now. Now as a business, the second phase of the company, pick one killer use case and win it hands down. What is that one killer use case? The market has clearly answered our existing customer success, uh, all, the, all the large scale deployments and the revenue, and the pipeline is everything pointing towards AI. Because if, if it's, a, it's just about AI, then commercially let's bet the company only on data part of the AI. If you think AI, you're going to think data, and we need to be the data part. And that part is the only commercial focus. Do one thing really, really well, and that's the AI store bet we are talking about. We are going to put all our muscle power behind this commercial product, and it's going to take off. I love that. That's, that's so, advice to, to founders and to anyone out there, man. Put all your focus on one thing and, yeah, and, and really yeah. smash it. Amy, this has been extraordinarily inspiring. Thank you for, for joining us today. And congratulations, such a milestone for you all. And also, 10 years is a legitimate amount of time to be, yes. be crushing it like you yeah, are. It is, it is. And it, it, it feels short and it feels long too, right? Yeah. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. in, in database world, yeah. it, we say it takes 10 years to build a good database. Exactly. 
we are seeing the same thing yeah. now with yeah. object yeah. store. Yeah. It's true for any enterprise product. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's a great honor to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank it's you. It's exciting, yeah. and we're we're excited we get to have the conversation. Sanjeev, thank you for joining us. Very Always welcome. love My having pleasure. you here. Excited yeah. to check out your Medium post tomorrow thank as you. well. That Appreciate sounds it. awesome. Rob, thanks for parting and Absolutely. and you know for for distributing my questions today. I, li I like this. We can we can wear many hats Absolutely. over here. It's all awesome. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful rock. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah. Day one of our coverage here at KubeCon. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.